Uh, I'll meet you in the book of Genesis tonight. We go back to the beginning of the Bible, not to the very beginning story, but I do want to go back to some of those early stories in the Old Testament. I want to kind of open tonight with two thoughts um, that are not theological thoughts. They're not scriptural thoughts. They're just things that I um, communicate to you as my friends. And the first one is that I am going to tell you up front that I'm taking a sermon and a thought that you've probably heard me preach before. That's something I don't always do. And I'm reworking it a little bit. Um, so you're being a little bit of guinea pigs. And uh, that's good. I do that to you a lot. We rework a message. We rework a passage. Work through the text and see where the Spirit leads us. And the second thing is that uh, this is not in any way focused to this room. I really sensed that it's the kind of word someone will come across as they go through YouTube or go through our website or listen to our podcast that might not be in this room, but that needs to hear this because I don't presume that there's a lot of religious activity in this room among you. I don't presume that you are um, in any way assuming that your performance gets you anything with God or that you have to jump through spiritual hoops to receive favor or that your anointings and your gifts and your talents are on a precarious edge with the Father that at any moment your foolishness will push it off the edge and God will go, okay, now fend for yourself. I don't think we got at that issue in this room. I think we might, maybe you've been there. Um, if you're like me, you've, been, you've spent a significant chunk of your Christianity in some mode resembling that, but I don't think that's the case here. However, some of what we're going to talk about tonight deals with that very thought. And so I say that to you, knowing that that isn't us, but you realize that it is so many people and that it is okay to hear that again, even if it's not you. It's okay to hear the things you need to stay equipped because even if you're not in that situation, that's so easy to slip back into in some ways of your life is feeling like you've got to earn this thing. You've got to perform for love or for favor. I know you know that you don't, but let's realize that many don't know that. So let's pray the liberty of that word into the hearer tonight as well. And I do believe there are some things, especially as we really unpack some of this a little deeper into the word tonight, that will speak some things to you because it spoke things to me and I don't feel like I'm earning anything from God. But some of this spoke some very powerful things to me about my own journey and that's where I hope we can land tonight and we'll take it all the way up to the cross where Jesus paid our price. I want to talk to you tonight from Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 28. And I want to minister to this evening on the ladder you climb. And I say that as a title. And I worked that title over because I had a group inclusive pronoun, the ladder we climb when I was thinking about this. But then I thought, no, I want, I want to personalize it because it's the ladder you climb, because nobody ever climbs a ladder in pairs. Ladder climbing is a solo activity. Don't try it with two people. That's, a, that's not a good idea to go, let's both climb this ladder at the same rung at the same time. That's probably not smart. Uh, so a ladder climber is a solo activity, and it's interesting because we're going to check out Genesis, or we're going to check out Jacob in the wilderness who gets a dream of a ladder, and it's a solo activity, and it's not God speaking to two people or three people at the same time. While the Word of God works in the collective, the ecclesia of the church, that's the called out ones. That's all of us who are ones brought together to be multiples in the same room. That's the church. The word works for the church. It works in a group. That's why we preach it in groups. That's why we hear it in groups. But it, it practically gets lived out in the solo. You take this word in a group, you discuss it, you chew it over, you wrestle with it together. Maybe Q&A, maybe you talk over it, maybe you testify. But when you go out into the world, you take it by yourself and you take all of that collective stuff from church and you put it into your day-to-day -day walk where it's you and him. And in that sense, Christianity is a bit solo. Not that you're by yourself, but your day-to-day -day walk is you and Jesus. Even if you're married, even if you're with your parents or you're with your kids, you really don't have the responsibility for other souls but your own. And so you're walking this out by yourself. And so uh, when I, that's why I say the ladder you climb because it's your work, it's your walk, it's you doing it. When we say that, 
We often think in terms of spiritually moving upward into greater things. Ladder climbing is used like a metaphor, an allegory for going deeper into the things of God or going higher into the realm of the heavens. And usually when we think about ladder climbing or think about things along those lines, we think in terms of I'm getting closer to God every day. I'm walking this out with him every day. And I want to just scratch that for a minute because I don't believe that God is summoning you up step by step into higher heights and deeper depths with God, or as my Pentecostal heritage used to say, new levels, new devils, all those clever things. Like if you move into a new level with God, you get a new devil. And so I got to where I was like, well, I think I've had enough levels then. I mean, if I can still get to heaven on this level, I don't want a new level if I got a new devil. I mean, why in the world would I invite more chaos into my life? And they go, well, yeah, but new levels means more of God, which I always thought was a little bit cheap. Like God was holding back some things from me because I hadn't climbed enough of the ladder. And I know that sounds comedic, but frankly, I think a lot of Christians are still there. And I don't think we're all that far off of that a lot of times of thinking like, I just need to climb this ladder of, of perseverance or fasting or Bible study or prayer or giving or just showing God how serious I am and just work a little bit harder. And that if I do, I'll get to a level in God I'm not at today. And that led to stuff like this. Well, old brother so-and-so is so anointed because he's paid a greater price. Oh, brother so-and-so is so anointed because he's stepped into a higher place with God. And that left the rest of us just feeling pretty stupid and condemned. Like, boy, you know, if I prayed better or gave a little more or had a little more time in my life to devote to God, I could be as close to God as that. And I think all of that just stinks of, of religion and it stinks of, of self. And I don't think it's the way it ought to be. And I think that we can walk through the Word tonight and show that you do indeed have a ladder to climb but it might not be exactly what you thought it was. And if we could figure out which ladder to climb and what it means to climb it, well, then we'd have something.